Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Today's video, I'm looking at what happens when everyone is bullish on the markets. This is for Bitcoins, for cryptocurrencies, it's for the stock markets, it's for commodities, it's for the real estate cycle. It's essentially around human psychology and what happens to price in the markets at these times. Now, this comment has come up quite often, and I think it's pretty important, especially at this stage of the Bitcoin cycle, for the land cycle, and of course, the stock market cycles as well, as uh, what I've been talking about on the channel is that we are going into, if not already in, a major bullish blow off top everything bubble stage of the cycle, which in the uh, the real estate terms is known as the winner's curse phase. When I say real estate terms, I mean the 18.6 year cycle. So if you want to know more about that and what happens throughout these cycles, plus all the updates on the markets hitting new all time highs yet again overnight, leading on to more of this greed, more of this bullishness, you know what to do, hit the like button, Thanks for your support on the channel. It does go a long way. Click it, even if you're watching on TV, helps a lot. And of course, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. It's your home of macro cycle analysis with me, Jason Pizzino. As I said, I cover Bitcoin, cryptos, the stock markets, and and I always say and the real estate cycle. Basically, no one else brings real estate into the overall picture. But that is the main cycle that we should be focusing on as investors. The real estate and economic cycle is where the majority of our attention should be to help reduce the emotions when it comes to the markets and help us better trade Bitcoin, cryptos, stock markets, and of course, real estate. Now, in the backdrop of this, with the extreme greed and bullishness, what we've seen over the last few months are the world's billionaires selling their stocks. I suspect this is going to continue on because if you look at it logically, if you've got money to uh, stocks to sell, you need to sell into greed. If you've got a lot of uh, stocks to sell, that is. You have to sell into greed. Otherwise, you can risk collapsing your own market. In the case of Bezos, we know they didn't sell a vast majority of their holdings, but you need to be selling into that greed as the market's running up. You're not trying to catch the top. You just need to be selling into that greed. And I think there's the, more of this is going to happen. We're going to see more people selling, but there's a lot longer to go in the cycle, as I'll show you in um, in just a moment. Now, the other thing that we can see is the fear and greed is hitting greed once again for the stock markets. Our CNN indicator here hits greed. Last week was greed. But remember, just a month ago was fear and a year ago, this time was extreme fear. Now, we are a long way above those prices of a year ago. This is the price point of a year ago. There's uh, your October, September period, and it ran just a little lower again into October. Now, I'm not saying that we go straight up from this point. I think there's still going to be some natural, healthy corrections along the way for uh, the stock markets. But it's important to understand what may happen over these coming months, if not getting close now to a couple of years, probably a little less than that, maybe around that 18 month period, which overall is probably going to be more and more upside throughout 2025 with more volatility and more extreme fear in higher lows being formed overall. Think back to August. We had the peak in mid-July down to the low in August when the carry trade fear broke out. The S&P 500 uh, re uh, retraced 10.5%. That brought on extreme fear and massive calls of recession. And now you look forward five to six weeks and the stock market hit a new all-time high. Pretty crazy to think that that was one of the best buying opportunities that we've seen since about May. So coming up to about five, six months, that was the time to be buying on those extreme fearful dumps. When the majority of people are selling out, you can see the volume here, they're getting fearful of another recession and all the headlines come out as the market rises from those uh, fear porn, bear porn type of channels and analysts telling us why this move down is the time that it's going to collapse. Like they said here, like they said here, like they said each of these times here, like they said all throughout 2022. You get the idea. It happens over and over again. So the S&P 500 is at a new all-time high, a little longer to go. I'm thinking sort of 12 to 18 months at least. The NASDAQ probably along similar lines. It's pushing to uh, fresh highs again over the last two months, going back to July now. So fresh highs there. 
And then also the Dow Jones um, hit new all-time highs on Wednesday. So yesterday wasn't a new all-time high, but getting very close to it once again. So on to the data here. And now we've looked at this a few times, but this one's just looking at the next 18 months. And the overall data that we've looked at is what happens between years ending in two, leading into years ending in five and six, essentially 2022 to 20, end of 2025, sometimes mid or early 2026. And this goes back over 100 years. Now, you're very welcome to reject 100, 120 years of data and believe there is a recession. It still could be likely. But if we're just going to go off the data here, keep an open mind to it. The decade, the identif uh, we identified a decade's middle 18 months as October of year four through to March of year six, October 1st, 1924 to March 31st, 1926, so on and so forth. Do that through each of the decades would show major growth on, um, if you're just using a dollar as an example, then obviously you would multiply that with how much money you decide to put in the market. Put a thousand bucks, you can watch the multiples increase just for that slither of time. You're investing just for those 18 months of the decade. Now, now we can go through each of these data points. You know I've done this many times on the channel before, but what I want to do is go straight to the summary here. If the market ho uh, history holds, the stock market could surprise many people by continuing to power higher over the next year and a half. However, there is no guarantee that the past will be a prologue in the market. Of course, that's always the case. We're just working off the data and essentially it suggests that each of those decades has shown pretty decent returns. Uh, can continue on here. There's a weight of evidence here. It's not a buy signal on its own. We've got plenty of those other buy signals that we've looked at here. But nonetheless, I wanted to recap this particular data and then also look at the Schiller P-E ratio. The P-E ratio gets brought up quite often to say how stocks are way overbought and they're not worth their earnings. It doesn't matter. That's what the data is saying. And then I'm just regurgitating that data. And when you hear it in a human voice, it triggers those people who believe that the earnings matters. And in these periods, it doesn't because when everyone is bullish, things can go a lot higher than what people expect. The same thing in reverse with bear markets. Prices can go a lot lower than most believe. Same thing, as I said, in reverse, prices can go a lot higher than many believe as well. Schiller PE, October 1st in year four through to March 31st, year six. Uh, you can see the first point ending, it's higher, it's higher, it's higher, it's higher slightly lower, it's higher, it's higher, it's higher, higher, slightly higher. And we're not sure yet, but this is the highest PE reading and it has continued to increase throughout the decades going back to 1924. So 100 years of data. Okay, let's move on to the next piece here. And this one is looking at the uh, seasonal trend here going from 22 to the end of 25. Now I could go through each of these points, but I'll just look at the summary table here. The going 120 years, starting in 1902 to 1905. So we're just looking at these periods, 90, uh, the years ending in two to the end of the year ending in five, which is the end of 2025. Something that I've been talking about a lot here on the channel where years ending in five, in our case, what we're going to see in the next three months is gonna be 2025, we're gonna be there. Typically, over the last 120 years of data, those years ending in five have been astronomical. Maybe it doesn't happen this time, but if we just go off the last 120 years, there is a very high chance that it is building up to be a very explosive year across the markets, all markets here. Now, a quick recap. Uh, this is for the Dow. You've got percentage gain over the, that period, so basically 39 months. Obviously, that's three years and three months. 46% up, 61% up, 76% up. This is for the Dow, mind you. 66%, 72%, 41%, currently at roughly around 15%. Do note, massive, massive warning, alert, all that sort of stuff here, because a drawdown can occur in that time too, and it will probably be quite wild. That means, a drawdown means how far from the high to the low of that move before it starts to recover again and go higher again. Look at the numbers here. Max drawdown percentage from any peak, 37%, 18%, 11%, 10.5%. We've just seen a 10.5%, and you can see how ridiculous people got for that drawdown. It went ballistic. 15% in the 80s, 15% in 2000, 
<clears throat> and then we had 2022, we're at 8%, basically roughly around a 10% now. And people got spastic when it came to the market falling. It was all cause of recession. It will happen again, and it is going to happen again in 2025. Just looking at the data, it's probably likely we're going to see higher prices. And higher prices we have seen throughout uh, each of the markets here. This is the Aussie market. Um, we haven't opened yet as I'm filming, but we've had a pretty so strong close yesterday on Thursday, 8,200 points. So that's a new all-time high for the Canadian market. And China, ballistic again, another huge, huge day, 7.4% getting very close to the, the price point, the price target that I looked at in yesterday's video after more money printing came into China as we looked at the data showing that more people were short, more investors were short China than ever before at these lows here. That has come in to be a higher low and the market has gone ballistic away from that low, breaking this top at 12,900, getting uh, back close to 13,400. That's the level that I'm really watching for here uh, to see what happens for the um, the rest of the year here for China, as that's the 50% level of the entire range, the all-time high back to the cycle or the bottom of that market. So it's going to be a pretty strong level for China to, to overcome uh, 14,000 points. This is all the bullishness in the market now beginning to show after we've talked about it since the lows. Uh, back in 2022, we looked at it in 2020 here on the channel. It's just around the 18 year cycle. And I try to make people more and more aware of this because of how much fear point there is out in the markets. Uh, the top 50 in India, big emerging market, risk on uh, market that we look at to let us know if there's a lot more uh, risk appetite out there. Well, what happened yesterday? New all time high, another big move there. 0.8%. This is day after day after day. New all time high, all time high, all time high, all time high, all time high. You can see what's happening. Everyone is bullish. Um, the Australian uh, dollar, we're looking at the, the currencies here as well. The thing that people aren't bullish on is the US dollar. So in the short term, even if this is to bounce, I still think we're going to see further downside on the US dollar. Reason being is what makes up the US dollar, the basket of currencies here, the euro, the pound, the yen, the Swiss franc are all in a bullish structure to break out, which means the US dollar is likely going to go lower. There's really no chance where you would see all of the currencies go up together uh, because they're all priced against the US dollar. So the US dollar is essentially dropping and the rest of these currencies are going up. That's basically looking like it wants to break out, higher lows forming here. The pound, higher lows, breaking out, getting closer to these previous tops. Um, this is in reverse here because you've got the US dollar first, then the Japanese yen. Essentially, one US dollar is buying less yen, meaning the yen is getting stronger at the moment. The same thing for the, the Swiss franc, which makes up a big portion of the DXY. Uh, you can see this breaking down, which means one US dollar is buying less of that uh, Swiss franc. And the same deal for our beloved Aussie dollar here. The only thing that's not happening is Aussie dollar is not getting that much stronger against the euro. So our European holidays in summer are getting not any more cheaper. Hopefully that changes next year. The other thing that is everyone is bullish on is gold. And I yes, I am getting to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I'm really trying to paint the picture here day after day with how bullish these markets have continued to get. A new all-time high here on the daily chart for gold day after day after day after day after day. This often happens in the second half of the real estate cycle. So this is uh, the important part to listen to here. It can happen for a period of time. As I go back and have a look at uh, 2006, 2005 into 2006, this is gold heading up. This is the S&P 500 also heading up. Then you get a bit of a, a change of guard here, both headed down throughout the recession in 2008, and then gold started to take off a little earlier than the S&P 500. Gold continued up. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 also bottomed a few months later and then continued to um, head up. So keep an eye on that. But in the short term, gold probably has these runaway moves and then basically does nothing for a considerable amount of time. What is that time? Well, just looking at the previous cycle in 2006 before the S&P 500 topped, gold went basically sideways in a trading range here for about 70 weeks, just short of a year and a half. So that could be a, a wind up here for 2025 or 2026 for gold. Nonetheless, Overall, everyone is still quite bullish on this market as well. So, <clears throat> winner's curse. 
everyone is bullish. What the hell does that mean to the markets? That means that the majority can be right for a period of time. And typically that period of time is the longest in the winner's curse phase. We are in the winner's curse phase in these last couple of years before we get the peak and then the collapse. And I think that collapse is coming 2026 or after. I'm not sure yet, but what I have looked at here is once you break to new all time highs, plenty of data to suggest that the years ending in five are going to be up as well. It's unlikely that we'll see a recession or any sort of market cycle peak in 2025 and then a collapse. There have been many who have called for 2024 to have that peak and collapse. Your blow off top folks and those guys, it doesn't seem like it's happening this year. So let's look out towards 2025 in this winner's curse phase where the majority are likely going to be right. So in that case, the worst thing that we can do is jump off the train while it's still moving because you miss out on the fastest gains in the market. And if you're familiar with Bitcoin cryptocurrencies, you know that those fastest gains happen towards the end of the move. The tough gains are in the early stages. You get pretty significant returns like we talked about in November 22 into that um, uh, around that low, you got 15 grand up to 30 grand and then it ran quick in the end of that move to 74 grand. And it looks like we're starting that, that move again. Essentially, these, these last moves are the hardest to hang on. And I tried to paint that picture when I went through the stock markets here as well because of the corrections. The corrections along the way, I believe it was this data here, they can be very severe. This is the, the Dow Jones, mind you, the stock market. And when this happens for Bitcoin, people freak out, you know, 15% drops. 37% drops. We've had a 33% drop um, to 49K. And that was basically the end of the world uh, for us in cryptocurrencies. That is going to happen again. And it's going to continue to reset the market. Now, before we get too far into the Bitcoin update, uh, I want to let you know about TIA Premium. It is on sale now. Last day is today. And a few comments came up just asking, what do you get? There are a lot of courses, a lot of meaty courses here. The GAN Swing Accelerator, the Wyckoff Volume Accelerator, the Elliott Wave Accelerator, and then a lot of masterclasses here. This dates back uh, many years, and there are a lot of brilliant masterclasses in here for you to go through and sort out your uh, financial freedom goals. So basically setting yourselves up, setting up your investment plans, you're uh, treating it like a business, and then also treating your trading like a business so that you can get more structured on what to do next in order to make a success of this, maybe win back some of your profits, maybe make more than what you typically would just trying to play it day to day. So there is a, uh, a lot of data to get through here. Plus we go through weekly live streams, updating the market, answering your questions live on, um, on our weekly live streams with all of our members. There is a lot to it, so I'll leave it there, but you can go and check it out in the link in the top of the video description where you can check it out on our website. The sale ends today, so make sure you are subscribed to that list and we'll shoot you out the, uh, the code to get the discount on TIA Premium. So back to cryptocurrencies and let's refresh the fear and greed index here. It has jumped, it's jumped to greed because Bitcoin has now reached our overbalance in time and price target. 16,800 up from the low with 52 days. As I said in yesterday's video, which is another reason why you should subscribe so that you stay up to date with the analysis here, hitting that mark, basically 66K, it got to 65,865, $135 short of 66K. That now means that this move has lasted longer and has gone higher in terms of price, not a percentage, but price. It might also be a percentage uh, than any of the other moves to the upside. So that is a good start for the next leg to the upside. Now, each of these times, there have been several times where we had an overbalance in time and price on the shorter term um, in previous cycles or you know previous moves, but it has failed. The thing to note here is that even if it is to fail, the what you want to see is the closing price being held up um, above these lows. So they could test. I'm saying the worst case scenario here. I don't think this is going to happen, but if it was to happen, you'd want to see the closes hold up above any of these lows. I don't think this is going to happen, but what we saw previously here was a breakdown, but the close was above the previous low. And then this period, which was extreme fear, 
very, very fearful. On the reading, it didn't come up as extreme fear, but you were on X or on YouTube, it was extreme fear right there. That also held up above the previous low. That is another really, really strong signal. And then from that point, the market's basically run away pretty quickly from that 52K low, now sitting at around $65,000. Now the evident emotions were shown up even more from this post here. Uh, just the, the 2K drop where it hit $55,000, people went ballistic. And it seemed like we were coming into one of these higher low formations where it had to test this level. And then basically Bitcoin has gone ballistic the other way. So every time these really, really extreme emotion events happen, uh, especially if it's a higher low, it can be a very good signal, no guarantees, but it can be a very good signal that the market is about to do the opposite thing. I've spent a lot of time in the video talking about emotions of the market and how we can trade them. And I just want to take another step uh, forward to have a look at what this means to the market for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies when everyone is bullish and how long these moves can last. So, we look back at the other the previous cycle in 2020, 2021, there are periods where the greed doesn't last too long, a greed and extreme greed. The breakout here, you're looking at the, uh, the green section, roughly around 56 on the fear and greed reading, and it hits greed, drops back into fear or neutral, fear or neutral, fear or neutral, and then reaches that um, extreme greed point just for a few days before everything starts to, to fail from that point. And so what you can do is take a measure from um, either the first time it reaches greed or the first time it reaches extreme greed, like it did roughly around May until it gets to that peak. And you can see it was about 45 days. So six to seven weeks. Um, you could keep the reading going until that peak there. That would give you that seven week uh, reading. And then you would say, all right, the reading has been reset because it, it dropped back down into fear or extreme fear after that peak. So that can give you a bit of a reading on how long uh, Bitcoin can handle extreme greed, where the majority are right that the market is extremely bullish. It doesn't mean that the price is going to go much higher, like it didn't at that lower top, but that's about as much as the market can with withstand when it comes to um, greed happening in the market. And so I did this as an um, an example, uh, an exercise on a previous video. So just to recap that, we can look at each of these times here. There's some extreme greed happening around November 2020, and you got a reset around there in January. So about 77 days to get to that. So 11 weeks. So you can call that one there. You can go from the extreme greed point around there or the day before all the way to the end or take it to the fear. That's about 32 days. So we've seen 11 weeks. We've seen four to five weeks. The previous one was about seven weeks to uh, 60 days. So what's that, about eight weeks. Uh, you could almost do it again just for us, um, these smaller readings here if you'd like. Otherwise, take it all the way to the end of the cycle here. Next, we can fast forward to the end of the cycle. Uh, there's a greed reading roughly around August. The reset happens to extreme fear. That was only 31 days again. And then it hits roughly around there into the peak. So that's the peak there, about 34 days. But we want to get a reading all the way down to a reset point of either fear, that would be 43 days, or the extreme fear, about 51. So if you've got a range here of about 30, 34 days, all the way up to about 77, 80-ish days, that's letting you know that the market can remain extreme, uh, you know, extremely greedy, extremely bullish for about one to three months before it must reset doesn't mean that it's the end of the move like it showed up here in January 2021. However, the move is probably getting on in uh, time, meaning that there might not be that many more gains to be had. There are still gains to be had, but it's probably time to start to get a little more defensive. So if you remember that from our other videos as well for your trading plans, you don't want to be offensive here. You don't want to be chucking tons of money into the, the market when you're starting to see signs of the greed extending for too long the end of the cycle, um, you've got tops that are getting lower, um, basically like a rounded top, I should say. And then you start to see the markets break down from previous swing bottoms. And then add into that more signals to tell you to get the hell out of the market. Our three day down rule happened at that particular peak as well. The lower top forms, and then this all comes crashing down. And I talked about this live and in real time on the channel back at that peak. So another 
big reason to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure the notification bells are on because when we get into this big crazy time, it's going to be a lot of fun times on uh, YouTube, but it's going to be the times that you want to be taking profits, not getting too sucked in to all the narratives that continue to circulate in the markets like stuff like this where Solana can go 50% of Ethereum's value and you're, you're reading these headlines towards the end of the move, right? And that's the sort of stuff that sucks people in, keeps them into the market longer, believing, well, it is possible. It hasn't got 50% yet. It could go higher. And you'll you'll see these headlines about basically every single altcoin um, that's that's got the spotlight at the time, maybe Bitcoin, maybe ETH, maybe Solana. And it's going to keep people in the market hoping and waiting. Meanwhile, each of the signals keep playing out. You start to see the greed roll over, the greed's breaking lows. The price chart is breaking lows. The signals are popping up. The lower highs are beginning to form and it takes months and uh, weeks and weeks, sometimes even months for that to play out. There are gains to be had at that time, so I'm not trying to make things overly bearish. I just want you to win, get your profits. And if you need more and want more, check out TIA Premium to get you on your straight and narrow to get those profits into your bank accounts at the end of this cycle. I'll leave it there for today's video as I think We've gone far enough for today and I'll see you back here at the next video. Everything's looking pretty damn rosy. Don't get too freaked out about the markets in the short time if there are some volati um, uh, volatile moves. Nonetheless, I'll see you back here at the next video and have a fantastic weekend. Until the next one, take care and peace out.